so these are the different situations we'll be discussing on how to ventilate them so one is like septic shock then parenchymal problems like pneumonia and ards and other thing is <coughs> lower airway obstruction upper airway obstruction how to ventilate a neuromuscular patient traumatic brain injury and myocardial dysfunction like post op myocardial dysfunction and other post operative patients so all these conditions will not go into too much details because most of them have already been discussed i'll just tell what is the physiological problem there and how to ventilate them so first is septic shock so this is like with respect to pediatric so this is a common problem which is encountered in pediatric even in adult i think septic shock is common so when to when to ventilate a child with septic shock so usually indications for intubation will be many patients because of shock and metabolic acidosis the work of breathing will be more and in sepsis around 40 to 50% of the patients can have some amount of myocardial dysfunction this is called septic myocardial dysfunction so because of that they can go into pulmonary edema so these two reasons because of the work of breathing and pulmonary edema that is one these are the indications for intubation and ventilation some patients if they have like associated sepsis and encephalopathy they may go into hypoventilation altered gcs they can have even refractory seizures severe hypoxia and if overall the child is or the adult is looking very sick we go ahead with ventilation so the important point to remember is normally if you see the amount of blood flow which goes for the respiratory muscles on the diaphragm is only 3 to 5% but in septic shock because of the work of breathing the amount of blood which goes to this respiratory organ can even be close to 40 to 50% so if you intubate and ventilate them and you take care of the work of breathing this amount of blood flow around 40 or 50% which goes to the lung can be diverted to the important organs like brain kidney and the heart so that is the concept why you go ahead with intubation for increased work of breathing and as you all know positive pressure ventilation itself is a good after load reducing agent it itself is a very good inotrope so it will help the left ventricle so in pulmonary edema positive pressure ventilation is again an indication to go ahead so in pediatrics usually when the patient receives more than 40 ml per kg and when there is lv dysfunction like you have frothing like pulmonary edema obviously you go ahead with intubation and ventilation and if you have obvious cardiac dysfunction and severe respiratory distress or respiratory failure distress and failure failure obviously you will go ahead with intubation and distress because most of the blood is diverted to the respiratory muscles you want it to be shunted to the vital organs which is the heart brain and the kidneys so these are the indications for intubation and ventilation in septic shock so how intubation helps in septic shock as i already discussed it takes control over the work of breathing so the increased work of breathing needs around 50% of cardiac output so once intubated and ventilated the cardiac output is shunted to other organs for better perfusion so remember but at the same time during the process of intubation so intubation always you give sedation unless there is a crash intubation you give sedation and muscle relaxants so during that time there can be a problem of drop in blood pressure because intubation is positive pressure because of positive pressure your venous return the blood has to go against gravity to the right atrium so because you are giving positive pressure there is a chance that hypotension can happen during the process of intubation and plus sedation because of sedation again there will be vasodilatation and pooling of the blood septic shock is already a vasodilated state so there can be pooling of blood sedation and positive pressure all these will reduce the venous return and there can be hypotension during intubation so you will have to either preload them with even more fluids or start a vasoactive agent like noradrenaline at the time so how does peep help in pulmonary edema so peep as you all know is positive end expiratory pressure it helps in keeping the alveoli open you don't want the alveoli to close open close open it always keeps the alveoli open so that whatever fluid is getting squeezed and it is shifted out back into the interstitium so because the alveoli are open the vq matching happens better so there is good oxygenation and good ventilation the co2 exchange also happens much better so thereby the compliance also improves and as i already said ventilation is itself a inotropic agent it's a very good afterload reducing agent and in sepsis 
if there is septic myocardial dysfunction smd it will itself help in improving the cardiac output of the patient